I was just looking over Texas A&M's roster. I found six names we're not talking enough about. In the top of that list, it's Micah Tease. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefani. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Ladies and gentlemen, hope everybody had an outstanding Easter weekend. And today, you know, Texas A&M, they put out their roster very late. I just, you know, a lot of SEC teams had already released their rosters, and they put their roster out a little bit late. And I was kind of scrolling up and down, looking at names, and I was like, and one name stuck out, st- stuck out to me. And I was like, we're not talking enough about this guy. And it's Micah Tease. Micah Tease is, is a wild card in this wide receiver room. And the reason I say that is because if you look at this room, we feel good about Jaday Walker. We feel great about Noah Thomas. We feel good about Moose, right? We feel good about them. Feel good about the transfers. Feel good, you know, Allen, Jabri Barber, feel good about them. But then there's Micah Tease, talented player out of high school. Don't really see him on the field last year. Don't know what he's got. And what happens? He's back. He's back for another year. You know, a type of player who I wouldn't have been crazy surprised to see him into the portal like we saw with uh, Ray McCottrell, you know, a talented receiver hit the portal. Micah Tease stuck around, and he's a really good football player. When it comes to role, I'll tell you this. He's going to be out there. Not every play, not every snap, but he's going to be out there some. And this kid's skill set, he just does so much so well. I, you know, I, he's just a high upside guy. And I think he's the wild card because we don't know what his role is going to look like. We know who he is as a player. We know what he can do on the football field, but we don't know what his role is going to look like. You've got a lot. You got a, a couple true freshman talented receivers coming in. You got some older guys. You got some veterans. You got some younger guys. There's a lot of talent of different ages, of different styles of receiver in this room and Micah Tease is one of those players. And if I was making my depth chart, which ladies and gentlemen, that is coming up. That is a plan coming up uh, soon for the show. We're going to do a full depth chart, kind of take it position by position um, for over a few weeks. And I have Micah Tease and Jabri Barber back and forth as the number four wide receiver. I think Micah Tease is going to be out there. I do. And once again, when I say out there, are we talking seven, 10 snaps a game? Are we talking two snaps a game? What are we talking? I think he's going to play some, some relevant snaps for this team. So I think he's the number one player. I've, I've sat here and, and raved on Noah Thomas and uh, Moose and, and, and Jabri Barber. And uh, of course today Walker, as y'all know, and I just was sitting thinking, I haven't talked enough about T's. I think he's a guy if you know, hopefully we don't see any injuries this season, but it's football. You're going to see injuries. And if an injury happens in this wide receiver room, I think Micah T is the guy who can step in and you won't see any drop off from these starters. Like I, he's a guy that has the upside to be a starter at a lot of power five schools. And you know, it's funny. Is power five even a term anymore? We got to, I don't know. I guess it's not whatever. Um, but I, I just I like this kid. I think he's going to be out there. I think he's going to play relevant snaps, and I think you're going to see him. I mean, could it be ten snaps a game? It, but still, if it's ten snaps a game, he gets a few targets. He could be a guy who could rack up three hundred yards, and and then next year, you know, you know, Moose is gone, and and uh, maybe Noah Thomas has a huge year and goes to the NFL. We, we don't know that, but let's say that's the case. We could be talking about Micah Tezas, a potential wide receiver one next um, in two seasons. You know, after not this upcoming year, but the year after. So. 
Micah Tease is in for a good year, and he's a guy we aren't talking enough about. The next guy on this list, we're going to go on a run of defensive linemen, and it's Malik Sila. Uh, Malik Sia. I, I've just always loved his length. You know, we had Jay Arnold on the show a few times um, a while back, and, um, you know, he kind of – he was always high on this kid, and I was high on him, and we just didn't see time of him. And why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Because Texas A&M's – Defensive line, edge rush room last season was stacked, as it is this year. And like we saw last year, you very well could see Malicia get buried in that depth chart. Could happen. But I just like the length and the long arms and the strength. And I think he's a guy that, if he got the snaps, could get after the quarterback. I really do believe that. So um, he's a, he's in one of those upside plays. You know, I think he could give you value getting after the quarterback. How many snaps is he going to play when you got a Nick Scorton and you got a Cassius Howell? I mean, it's just, it's going to be interesting. But he's going to play some snaps, ladies and gentlemen. That's the reality here. He's going to play some snaps. And I think he's a guy with some high upside. So that's my number two guy on the list. And then number three, I got Gabriel Brownlow Dindy. Coach Elko said he's not going to be participating. <coughs> Excuse me, much, if at all. I forget the quote now. It was either at all or. Um, very little in spring. I'm pretty sure it was at all, but you're not going to see much of, if any, of Brown Dindy in spring. But Coach Elko said he should be you know, ready to rock and roll. So um, he's another guy. I I think you could see him make some plays. I like his I like his size, six three, about three hundred pounds. He's a guy who could once again play some relevant snaps along his defensive line. But the problem is, it's a deep room. You know, we're going to talk about one more defensive lineman after um, Dindy and. You know, this defensive lineman, all three of these guys, I'm willing to bet that one of them has a breakout season. So Gabriel Brenlin did the, I think he's another guy we're not talking enough about, but the guy, the other defensive lineman that I think we're definitely not talking enough about is DJ Hicks. We forget who he is. I think he was a top 10 player in the class, right? To, uh, true freshman last season. And same story. He gets buried by an incredibly talented defensive line room. Not his fault, just reality. And you saw some upside in that bowl game. He made some plays, and I think that you're going to see him make some serious plays this year. I think he's going to play some snaps. I don't think he starts, but I think he's going to be out there 20, 25 snaps a game. And then I think um, I think he could work his way into a starting role. He'd have to overtake a talented veteran, but it could happen. So these three names, I just um, you know a couple of interior guys, a couple of um, edge rushers, but or and an edge rusher, but yeah. But uh, these guys are incredibly talented. And, and listen. These guys could go transfer to a to a good school and start or play relevant snaps. So them sticking around, it's huge for Texas A&M's defensive line depth, but it's also huge because these guys, they're going to stick around. And if they stick around maybe one more year, this room could open up and they could be stars playing for Texas A&M. So those are the uh, defensive linemen we're not talking enough about. And then I've got another one, and this may be a bit of a surprise, I think, because it, he's – kind of would have to overtake a player that y'all know I love, and that is Jaden Platt. Could Jaden Platt take over Donovan Green and then the two transfers, Watson and Miller? I don't think so, but I think his upside, once again, is through the roof. Buried last year as a true freshman behind Jake Johnson and, of course, um, Max Wright. Some guys are out of that room now. Donovan Green's coming back, but he is dealing with an injury. You, they did bring in those transfers but there's going to be a role at Texas A&M at some point for Jaden Platt. Talented, talented tight end. I love the frame. I love his ability to block. I love his ability to catch the football. And as I always reiterate on this show, Coach Colin Klein loves to use the tight end position. I, I think you're going to see some relevant snaps from Platt this year. It, what Donovan Green's recovery looks like for his ACL tear from last season is going to be interesting. Um and, you know, you've got your tight end, once again, there's a lot of blocking. There's a lot of stuff going on to where you're going to see some injuries, and I think Platt could be thrusted into some relevant snaps. So he's a guy that we're high on Miller and Watson and, of course, Donovan Green, but I'm telling you, Platt is a guy who can come in and you won't see much of a drop-off. And then the last guy is the transfer tackle, Derek Graham from Troy. PFF numbers are great. Um and I think that he's a guy who, you know, we heard Trey Zune say when he was interviewed the other day, we don't know who's going to start. We don't know who's going to be out there in this offensive line room yet. There's a lot of talented guys. Um, 
battling for not a lot of spots. So could Derek Graham work his way into a starting role? I'm not sure of that, but I think you could see him be out there. Another offensive line, you're going to see people get banged up. Once again, that's the reality of getting into a mini car crash every snap. So could Derek Graham be a guy for this team? I think there's a world where that happens. So those are six names that we aren't talking enough about. Those of you every day or at Locked on Aggies know who I am talking a lot about enough. So whether it's one of these six names, whether it's a player that I didn't mention, who is someone that I'm not talking enough about? Let me know in the YouTube comments. I'm very curious to hear y'all's thoughts on that. Also want to say if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It really helps the show out a ton. I would appreciate that a lot. So, yeah, if you're if you're an everydayer and you haven't pressed that subscribe button yet, hit it. It helps a ton. And then, hey, if you once again, everydayer, click that like button. Helps the show a lot. Appreciate it. We're going to talk about some score predictions and a record prediction for the 2024 season coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the best app to ever be created. And I'll go as far as say this. If you use any other place to go buy a ticket, you're a little bit crazy. Game time, I just bought tickets to an MLB game this weekend. I knew exactly where my seat was going to be because of the game time app. They show you when you click on your seat, you can take a view. You can look and see, okay, where's the, am I in, do I want to be in the outfield? Have I, you know, do I sit here? I'm now a big believer in sitting in the outfield of baseball games. I didn't used to be. I used to be a huge third base, first base line guy. Now I'm a huge outfield guy. Um, I like being able to see the the pitches coming in and I really enjoy sitting out there. And you know what got me to sit in there? The game time app. That is what got me in to uh, sitting in the outfield because I was able to view those tickets and decide to start sitting there. It's the best place to go buy all your tickets. I promise you the best deals on last minute tickets, or I got my tickets early for the baseball game I went to. So do that as well. I promise you, you are going to want to check out the game time app. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So an article came out from our friends over at Aggie's Wire. Incredible piece. And it was talking a lot about, hey, Let's predict Texas A&M's record and, and some score predictions. And I'm going to go through this and say if I agree, if I disagree, if I think the score is a little too high, a little too low, is Texas A&M going to win that game? We're going to have that conversation. So once again, Aggies Wire, great article. Go check it out. Go check them out. They do great work. So season opener, they have Texas A&M beating Notre Dame 24-17 at home at Kyle Field to start things off 1-0. 24-17 is a score prediction here. I, I like I like the the score prediction here. I think this is going to be a bit of a of a defensive game. I think you're going to see some points scored, but I like that like 21-28 uh 17-24 area range for the score and I do I, I think Texas A&M wins this game. There's one game on here that I don't know if Texas A&M wins that they have as a win, but I do think Texas A&M wins this game. McNeese State, um, they, of course, have as a win. So 1-0 after a 24-17 win over Notre Dame. I don't disagree with the score prediction. I would probably say something like 28-21. I think it's going to be a little bit higher scoring than they have it, but I do think you're going to see a lot of defensive effort in this game. It's going to be a really good football game, but I do think Texas A&M comes out on top. McNeese State... They have their uh, final score, Texas A&M 42, McNeese State 10. Don't disagree with anything there. I mean, it should be a 56-7, you know, 42-3 type of type of game. You, know, you should win this game. You should win this game by 30, 35 points. That's, that's what should happen here. Um, then week three at Florida, the game that we've talked about could be one of the most pivotal games of the year. They have the Aggies winning this game 31-24 in the Swamp to start the season 3-0. I think this one could be a little bit – I think this one 
I'd probably have the score more like a like a 24-17, 21-17 kind of thing. I think it's going to be a little bit lower scoring. Um, I think these two teams are going to kind of kind of kind of muck it up, but I do think it's going to be a great football game, and I think the Aggies come out on top. So I have this one a little bit lower scoring, but I still think the Aggies get the win there. I do. Um, then you're back home against Bowling Green. They have the final score of 45-7, Texas A&M. Not going to fight anything there. Another game you should win by about 30, 35 points at home. Should be a stat pattern for your receivers, for your quarterback. It should be a, be a great game. A lot of Hopefully you get some sacks from your defensive line. Uh, Nick Scorton takes somebody's lunch money. That's what this game should be. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. Week five against Arkansas in AT&T Stadium. Um, Aggies Wire has Texas a and winning this ballgame 21-18. I think Texas a and wins this game – a lot more soundly. I know that games are weird in this one. You know, Texas A&M kind of. I would say the closest to a blowout we've you know really seen was was when Texas A&M took care of business last year. A couple late plays from Anias and some touchdowns. Kind of you pull away there. Um, I think the Aggies win this game, and I think it's going to be more of a 35-21 type of thing rather than a 21-18. I, I I know it's been a weird series, but I think the Aggies win this win this um, football game more convincingly than 21-18. So 5-0, and and I, and I really don't disagree. Then comes the game against Missouri, and I agree here. They have the Aggies losing this game 31-28 to go 5-1. and one. I don't disagree. I think that Missouri is a really good football team. I think that, that you're going to see – Luther Burden, you're going to see Brady Cook, as written here in the article, come in and have a great game. Really good football players. I think it's close. I think this is a great score prediction, but I think the Aggies do lose a close one to uh, pick up their first loss of the season, move to 5-1 and one on the year. Then you got at Mississippi State. They have the Aggies winning this one 28-17. I also think this is a good score prediction here. I think that's kind of where I see it. A, not a super high-scoring game, but I think the Aggies win this game by a couple scores, a couple possessions. So 28-17 I think is a fair score prediction for this game, and I don't disagree at all. Then you got LSU at home. This is an interesting one. I, I don't disagree with this. They have the Aggies win this one. So let me write down. I want to make sure I've got – so I, I've got – I'm losing two. Yeah, okay, I want to make sure I have this right. So I also have Texas A&M winning this game. 31-21 is what they have. I don't see that. I see this being a I see this being a, a 31-28, a 24-21 type of game. I think it's going to be a, a real close battle. And I just think what I think it's an even, even game. And what puts the Aggies on top is knowing that this game is in front of the 12th man in Kyle Field. So I, I think the Aggies win, but I don't I don't know if it's gonna be a 10-point win. I think it's gonna be a three, a four, a seven point win, something like that. Not a 10-point win. Then week nine at South Carolina. They have the Aggies winning this one 35-24. I think this game could be sneakily close. I like the score prediction here. Um, I could see it being something more like 28-35. Then uh, 35-24, but I do think the Aggies get the win here, and I agree with the eight and one. Um, then New Mexico State, you go your um, this one they have 38-13. New Mexico State, they are losing their their quarterback and their coach. This team did beat Auburn in Jordan Hare Stadium last year. I don't think um, it's it, you're losing your coach, you're losing your your um, quarterbacks. So I don't think. I I think this is going to be the most difficult non-conference game that isn't Notre Dame, but I still think, you know, 42-13 is a, you know, they have 38-13. I'd say something like 42-14, something like that. But you get to win your 9-1. They then have the Aggies going to Auburn and losing 2017. I agree with that. I think these are going to be two defensive-minded games. It's written here in the article. This is a trap game, plain and simple. Want to know why? Because next week is the Lone Star Showdown. So I think I think that Texas A&M loses this game in Auburn. It's a tough place to play. Tough place to play and I I'm not saying this team is going to be looking on. I'm not saying, well, they they're going to be sitting there going, "We don't care about Auburn because Texas is next week." That's not what they're going to be thinking. 
But I do think this game is going to be a close one. Um, and I think the Aggies lose 24-17, 24-20. I, I, it's going to be a rock fight, low scoring game. They do have Texas A&M beating Texas in the Lone Star Showdown, 28-24. I know, folks, you're going to hate me. And perhaps some different developments could change my opinion on this, but I just I, I don't see the Aggies winning this game. I, I hate to say that, and they could. I mean, like I say, I'm not saying that it's it, they're going to get blown out because they're not. I just think Texas is really good. I think that I think that Texas a is going to catch up to Texas um, and, and when it comes to development and all that stuff. Recruiting wise, it's it's Texas A&M as a lead right now, but. The development wasn't there. Texas has been, I believe, developing. And it's interesting because it hasn't, you know, it, it's it's been interesting, but I do think that Texas AM is going to gonna leapfrog Texas. I just I like Sarkeesian. I do as much as I hate to say that, but I think I like Mike Elko better. So while I think the Longhorns might get the best of the Aggies this season, I like the future for Texas AM and I, I really like the direction this program's going. So um maybe I'm a hater. Maybe my opinion will change here in a few months, and it very well could based on just how this team looks, maybe the spring game, some things we hear from the summer. But right now I have the Aggies going 9-3. and three. I think they lose a close game, it's a score similar to that, but I just think the Longhorns get the win. Um, so I would love for my opinion to change on that, and I think it very well could, but some developments are going to have to happen for that to happen. So the score predictions there, I have 9-3. and three. They have – 10 and 2. Leave your um leave your your record predictions for the Aggies for the season in the YouTube comments. I'm very curious to hear that. I need to go to the corner. I need to go grab the broom. Want to know why? Because Texas AM sweeps the Auburn Tigers on the diamond. We'll talk about that series coming up right here on Locked On Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Amazon Fire, and tell you about the Fire TV channels. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV. That provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to try you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues, including college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date with all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. So the baseball team sweeps the Auburn Tigers. This was a fun series, and I do want to add this caveat. I think – I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. I do think that Auburn is a better baseball team than than um, the record shows. I think they're a little bit better than Mississippi State. I think this, is, this sweep means a lot more than the series win over Mississippi State, in my opinion. Um, so we talked about game one, but, of course, that was a 9-7 win. Game two, you win 12-8. Monty does Montgomery things, three for four, three RBIs. Grohovac, two for four. Appel, two for five. The staff has 14 total strikeouts, five free bases. I'll take that. I believe it was three walks, two hit by pitches. We can live with that. Great win. One common theme from this weekend that I picked up on, and it was similar in both games, every time Auburn scored a few runs, Texas A&M scored a few runs, and I love that about this team. When you get punched, you got to punch right back in baseball or momentum is going to start heading to one dugout. You've got to punch back, and it seems like every time Auburn put up a crooked number, not every time, but a good amount of times this weekend that Auburn put up a crooked number or scored a run, Texas A&M answered right back with the right hook of their own. So I love that, game one, 12-8 win. And then game three – or game two, excuse me, um, 
12 8 win. And then game three, the 12 inning thriller. What a fun baseball game. This is, you know, I'm going to say it, you know, there's something romantic about baseball, and it's games like this college baseball, MLB baseball. This is a fun game. You just got to love college ball watching this baseball game. Both teams fighting their behinds off, and the Aggies come out on top to win the series. Loved that baseball game. That was one of the most fun baseball games I've watched. Um, you see Shot go three for three. You see Burton go three for five with two ribbies. You see Targach go two for four with an RBI. What does Monty do? Montgomery things, three for six, two RBIs. Just an absolute monster at the plate. Uh, Weston Moss, incredible outing. Two scoreless, two, um, two scoreless, four strikeouts in, in extras. Love that. Two scoreless from this kid in, in extras to get the win. Love that. Great appearance from him. The staff did a good job um, late in this game. A couple, you know, Auburn fought back, and then this staff was able to shut it down after that. Loved the way this pitching staff fought. Um, I just feel really good about this baseball team, ladies and gentlemen. I, I would love to have that series over at Florida, and I know they just won a series this weekend, but Texas a and better baseball team. Um, getting a sweep like this at home over, once again, a team that is not, I think they're what now, one in eight Auburn is, but they've played Vandy on the road, Arkansas at home, and Texas A&M, which is arguably like three of the top four teams in the conference. Like this is like they have had a tough go of it. And so sweeping a team like this, even at your home ballpark, I don't care. It's a huge, huge thing for this Texas A&M team. So, you know, we have a lot more baseball games to talk about, a lot of fun games to break down. But this team, I will say it every time until my opinion changes, this team can win a national championship. So, folks, I would I would start to get mentally prepared to get some tickets to Omaha because this team is going to be special. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Once again, hope everybody had an outstanding Easter weekend. Hope everybody has a great week this week. Final Four is coming up. Baseball's back. A lot of fun going on in the sports world and a lot of fun conversations coming up here this week at Locked on Aggies. Everybody have a great rest of your day today, and we will see you tomorrow.